it's a career for anyone. You might have to do things a little differently, but there's a way for you to do everything that a man does in this job. Welcome to HTT Talk Trucking. I'm Deborah Lockridge, and today I'm talking to Caitlin Aiken. She's a young diesel technician at Southeastern Freightlines Fort Worth Service Center. Caitlin, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to get to talk with you today. Talk to me about what got you interested in becoming a technician in the first place. So it started out with my high school trade school, and I went for automotive. And I ended up getting a summer job from that, Um, a great place. They also had a diesel shop on the property. And I thought it was so cool that they got to go work on the boats, excavators, tractors, and all like the heavy duty equipment. And so I just naturally gravitated gravitated towards it. And um, I fell in love. So that's what what, uh, got you interested in doing the Votech and the automotive in the first place? Um, I wanted to have a trade. So I had something that I could fall back on um, while I was going to college um, and just have a secondary career. Is it turned out to be a secondary career or is it your primary career at this point? It has turned out to be my primary career and I can't be happier. So went to Botex School Automotive. Um, just kind of tell us a little bit about you know your training and how you got uh, to be at Southeastern. Okay. Um, while I was in high school, I was attending... Um, our trade school for automotive and through that I got to learn a bunch of different things and we had a competition which was called Skills USA and um, I placed seventh but I also got to talk with some of the people from UTI and I ended up coming out to Texas um, for the diesel program they offered Um, and I went did very well throughout that course and afterwards I was um, looking for a job and Southeastern showed up and um, my first interview, I knew this was the job I wanted and this is where I wanted to work. And I didn't care what I was doing at the company. I just wanted to work here because it's a great company. What were some of the things that, that impressed you in that interview that, about the company? Um, so the first thing they talked about was their culture and just their pyramid and their values and just how quality is their main focus. And they want to put their... Uh, customers first, but they also care about um, their internal customers, which are the drivers and all your technicians and all your other people. Right. Yeah, the, the people the people inside uh, w- without which you couldn't de- wouldn't have any way to uh, service the customers on the outside, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, so it sounds like you, you did very well in, in school and then uh, I understand about a year ago, you uh, went to like a big four, four day training program where you were named a top tech. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that. Um, the training program was um, very informative. We went over all like the basics on trucking. So we went over fifth wheel operation, engine operation, um, and just like wheel ins. And so it gave you a good foundation. Um, and then I saw it as a challenge and a competition. And so I just wanted to do the best that I could um, and put my best foot forward in showing that I am doing well in the shop and that this is a field for women to succeed in. Um, is there anything that you're like specific that you're like really good at that you specialize in? Um, I specialize in the DPM. That is um, a PM that comes at the half-life of the vehicle. Ours are at 500,000, half a million miles. And we basically tear down the entire truck and then rebuild it. Wow. <laughs> so you, I guess, you know, have your hands in every single part of that truck, right? Yes, ma'am. So um, when you were looking at being a diesel tech as a career, it's, let's face it, it's still, and you know, automotive too, it's still like really very dominated by men. Uh, you know, what were your thoughts there? You know, did that intimidate you at all? What did you, you know, how, what did you think about that? I don't really think it intimidated me. I just found it more as a challenge, and something I could do and show that I am capable and that it's just, it's a career for anyone. As long, you might have to do things a little differently, but 
there's a way for you to do everything that a man does in this job. Are there challenges, you know, that you have found that you've had to have a, find a way around, find a different way to do things? So typically with lifting heavy things, I have to like put it on my leg or something else to help lift it. But I've also found um, with other tasks, like um, when we do transmissions, some of the connectors are hard to get to, but I can like sit up in there and lay on top of the transmission. So it's also a benefit in ways. It's not just um, hurtful that I'm a woman. So it's very helpful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, disadvantages and advantages, which really kind of the case in any job, we all have different skills and abilities. And uh, so no reason that uh, you can't do everything that guys do, just um, different, might be a different way. So I've been in the industry for a long time, since before you were born. Um, <laughs> and it's been really interesting to watch the trucks get more and more uh, complex and computerized. You know, you've grown up with computers. Um, you, know, you know, tell me a little bit about that. Uh, did that, you know, appeal to you? Is that something, uh, you know, another thing that you look at as a challenge? Or is it, what do you think about that? I tend to also look at it as a challenge because the industry is constantly changing and growing and just like transforming in such significant ways. And so keeping up with all the technology and the diagnosing and our trucks have gotten so much more um, technologically advanced that there's so many wires running through the truck that electrical diagnostics is a big part of what we do. Yeah, and you know, that's electrical diagnostics is something that's been tricky for a long time, but obviously more important than ever. Tired of dealing with less than ideal roads? So is Apollo Truck Tires, which is why we've engineered our Indutrax line for North America's toughest surfaces. From construction sites to gravel roads, Apollo Tires conquers the worst conditions with an industry-leading performance guarantee. In other words, they're smart tires from not smart roads. Visit ApolloTruckTires.com to learn more. Have you ever run into anyone skeptical of whether a woman can do this job? I have. Um, at my first job working, a lot of the guys would see me come out to work on their tractors or excavators and be like, what? But then we would all, I also had the other um, people that were like so thrilled and excited that I was doing this. If you, um, if you had people skeptical or critical, um, how did you respond? Typically, it was um, positively, and I was I would explain, well, I know this isn't like typically what a woman will do. This is a man's job, but I would show them like how it works and just explain that I am just as capable and that it's a very enjoyable job and I'm just as good as a man is. Southeastern Freight Lines was recently honored by Women in Trucking as one of the top companies in the industry for women to work for. How does a company support you as a female technician? Well, typically I find it with just the people and the drivers. They're all so excited and happy. And then my managers and everyone in the shop is just wonderful. They're so caring and compassionate and very helpful with everything. Um, in our shop, it's kind of like family. So if you need something, you can go to someone and they'll like gladly help you or um, find someone that can help you. So yeah, I think uh, kind of, a company culture, you know, as you said, uh, kind of back to that first interview, that you know, that culture of supporting people internally and then people supporting each other, right? Exactly. What, um, any particular goals you have for the future? Um, right now, I'm really happy on the floor, but I hope at some point I can move up into management and then have a wider um, reach on helping others as well. And, um, Maybe one day I'll be able to help teach other techs, which would be wonderful. That would that would be one. Well, it sounds like uh, you are well on a way to being a, your top technician. You obviously are passionate about it, understand a lot. What advice would you have for other young women um, that might be looking at a career choice like this? My advice is to just go for it. Um, you're going to feel like you jumped in the deep end at first, but it's, it, it gets better after you figure out ways to do things that suit you and figure out what your um, uh, better skills are. It's, 
it's so much easier. And then as long as you um, make sure you have a good foundation for all your electrical, that's a big struggle. Um, and then also your after treatment because they're new and they're not as well learned as they should be. Yes, after treatment systems have been um, a, a headache for shops for <laughs> ever since they, they came out, um, along. And, um, and I know that is a challenge. And so they, that's good advice for anybody looking at this at this you know, career, getting into this career, that electrical after treatment, those are uh, important parts of the job. Uh, anything particular about the job that's like your favorite, you know, what do you really like about the job? I think my favorite thing is getting to talk to the drivers and let them know like, hey, it's fixed. And it's something that they've been complaining about or hadn't been able to get fixed. And then finally it's fixed. And then whenever we finish the DPM, um, the truck looks almost brand new and just being able to see how happy and joyful they are at seeing this truck that's like had a full transformation. How long does it take to do that whole rebuild? Um, it typically takes two to three days. And are you working with other people as a team? Um, we have full techs on this and we all work as a group and um, more, more than not, um, typically we're all trying to get to the same thing. And so we're separated on what we're doing, but in the same way, we're united in what we're doing. All right, so you've each got sort of separate areas that you're focusing on, but all working together. <laughs> yeah. You know, we were talking about the tech and tech in the shops, I know, has changed a lot. It's a, what kind of sort of tech tools that you use in your job? Do you always have up with uh, diagnostics or apps or anything like that? Um, so for diagnostics, we typically have our shop computers. We have about four or five, four-ish. And with them, we have our Cummins, which is our quick serve, and then tech tool, um, well, Insight, um, and all the other like Navstar and DBL on there. And so we can use those, hook up to the computer, find all the fault codes, and start diagnosing. So your specialty is doing these rebuilds, but if you're being involved in diagnostics, is that something you're doing as you're doing these rebuilds? Or you know, do you also end up just uh, working on trucks that came in that need some work? In between our um, DPMs, we have um, sometimes we can have a week, sometimes we have a day. And so we'll have other trucks that come in that we also get to work on. All right. Well, Kaylin, um, I think we're about out of time. Anything else that you'd like to add that we haven't talked about? Um, just that this industry is wonderful and all the drivers and technicians and people in management just become a family and trying to accomplish one goal. And it's just wonderful seeing everyone come together. How do you think trucking companies can attract more young people like yourself? Um, showing that a skill, because right now I think we're still in the mindset that college is the first and foremost when you can get so much further with a skill and have something to stand on in the future. It's just, I feel like showing that trades are required and um, a foundation of our country would be very helpful. It is, it is. It's a lot of, a lot of good careers that don't involve going to college. Um, so that's a, a, a good point. Did you, um, Think about trucking at all. You said you kind of got into automotive, but uh, before you got that job with uh, doing the diesel stuff, did you uh, think about trucking or what did you think about trucking? Did you ever think you would be involved in trucking? I don't, if I would look back, I don't think I'd ever expect myself to be where I am today, but it's just, it's so amazing how far I've come from what I was to now, because originally I wanted to go into law enforcement. And so just seeing like the difference and being in like engulfed in this world and industry, it's amazing being able to see it. It's a, it's a, it's a fun industry to work, work in. I'd say I kind of got into it by accident as well. And that was like 33 years ago. I'm still here and still enjoying it. <laughs> and I love talking to people like you. So thanks so much for being with us today. I appreciate your insights. Thank you.
And again, we've been talking to Caitlin Aiken with Southeastern Freight Lines. And don't forget to subscribe to HDT Talks Trucking on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. Mm-hmm.